Yes, it is time for a brand new Top 10 series. How's it going everybody? Tommy Star here. Thank you for clicking on this video and welcome to my newest Top 10 video. Meant to get this out a few weeks ago, but it is time for... Yes, most anticipated films of 2018. 2018 is really shaping up to be one hell of a year for releases. We got lots of MCU movies coming this year. We got uh, another DC Universe movie coming out this year. Some good horror movies. We got a lot of good stuff. Um, I've been to the theater one time this year, and that was on January 1st. Me, Jess, and the kids went and seen uh, the brand new Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. Pretty good movie. It actually came out uh, a couple days before that, so technically not a 2018 movie. But that was my first film I seen in 2018. Otherwise, uh, the new Insidious movie has come out uh, this year so far. What well, didn't make my top 10 list, but would have liked to have seen that in the theater. Probably just wait for video on that one. But otherwise, we have a lot of great movies coming out. Uh, this was very difficult again to put together this list. Uh, because of so many great releases, but after uh, studying it very close, reading up on a lot of stuff, uh, I finally got my top 10 list put together for you guys, and I'm ready to share it with you. So without further ado, let's go ahead, let's get into the top 10 list, but before we do so, as usual, let's take a look at a few honorable mentions. So some good stuff. Uh, as usual, almost made it into the top 10, but not quite. So we're going to go ahead, start the list with, like usual, number 10. Take a look. Venom. Intended to be the first film in Sony's Marvel Universe and a spin-off of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Directed by Ruben Fleischer from a screenplay written by Scott Rosenberg, Jeff Pinkner, and Kelly Marcel. This film stars Tom Hardy as the popular Spider-Man villain Venom, a.k.a. Eddie Brock. Development on a standalone Venom film first began with producer Avi Arad in 2007. After going through various iterations, the film was finally confirmed in March of 2017. The intention was to begin a new shared universe featuring the Marvel characters to which Sony possessed the film rights, though Sony also intends for the film to share the world of Spider-Man Homecoming, which is set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe because of a deal between Sony and Marvel Studios. Though the film will center entirely around the character of Venom, Eddie Brock, there have been talks of Tom Holland having a cameo role of Peter Parker and or Spider-Man, though nothing has been confirmed. Michelle Williams, however, is the only other cast member announced as Anne Wayne. I'm excited for this movie. I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting how they're making this part of the MCU, but not, and kind of creating this, this new universe that is basically a spinoff of the MCU. But, um... Uh, I think just simply for the fact that we get Tom Hardy in another villain role, you know, after his performance um, as Bane, and now to see him as Venom, DC to Marvel, should definitely be interesting because he kicked ass as Bane. So I'm really excited for it. Should be a lot of fun. And Venom will be hitting theaters October 5th. On to the next. The highly anticipated Deadpool sequel, tentatively titled Deadpool 2, will serve as the 11th installment in the X-Men film series. Once again written by Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick with David Leach taking over the directing duties and once again starring Ryan Reynolds as the wisecracking mercenary, reluctant superhero Deadpool, a.k.a. Wade Wilson. Plans for a sequel to Deadpool began before the film's release and were confirmed by February 2016. Though the original creative team of Reynolds, Reese, Wernick, and director Tim Miller were quickly set to return for the second film, Miller left the project in October of 2016 due to creative differences with Reynolds and was soon replaced by Leach. 
Probably one of the most exciting additions to the Deadpool sequel is the introduction of Cable, portrayed by Josh Brolin, who is the son of X X-Men leader Cyclops. Not to mention returning mutants Negasonic Teenage Warhead and Colossus. Also, TJ Miller will return as Wade's best friend and bar owner, Weasel. Not much has surfaced on the film's premise, but being a Deadpool film, I'm sure we can expect plenty more of Wade Wilson's vulgar, charming, fourth wall breaking semantics we fell in love with in the first movie. Uh, the first Deadpool film, it was so much fun. Um, it was cool to see Ryan Reynolds actually get a proper uh, role as Wade Wilson slash Deadpool compared to X-Men. Uh, Origins Wolverine, where it was not quite <laughs> the correct character, but it'll be a lot of fun. I mean, the first movie was a blast. This movie should be hopefully just as fun, if not better. And uh, just to know that we get another X-Men film in the X-Men universe. So I'm really looking forward to it. Deadpool will be hitting theaters on May 18th. Moving on. Black Panther. The first film to kick off 2018 for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Directed by 2015's Creed director Ryan Coogler, who also wrote the screenplay alongside Joe Robert Cole. Black Panther will serve as the first standalone Black Panther film, the 18th in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and the sixth film of Phase 3. Chadwick Boseman returns as T'Challa, a.k.a. Black Panther, alongside fellow cast members Michael B. Jordan, Lupita Nyong'o, Martin Freeman, and Forrest Whitaker, just to name a few. After the events of Captain America's Civil War, while still mourning the death of his father T'Chaka, King T'Challa returns home to Wakanda. But when two enemies conspire to bring down the kingdom, T'Challa must team up as the Black Panther with CIA agent Everett K. Ross, portrayed by Martin Freeman, and members of the Dora Milaje Wakanda's Special Forces to prevent a world war. The character of Black Panther will definitely appear more comfortable in the film compared to Civil War now that he is back in his natural environment. Chadwick Boseman, who called T'Challa an anti-hero, said that he is very much aware of the responsibility and as the leader of Wakanda. So yeah, the uh, first Marvel Cinematic Universe to hit theaters in 2018, Black Panther. I mean, I... I'm excited for this film. I've always enjoyed um, Marvel's uh, new character films, like, you know, other than just the standard Iron Man, Captain, Thor, Incredible Hulk. You know, when they began with Guardians of the Galaxy, introduced uh, Ant-Man, and then uh, Doctor Strange, um, and now, you know, Black Panther. You know, I really like the... Um, the standalone new character films they've always been really enjoyable and black panther was a really cool character in civil war so i'm really excited to see his standalone film um and like i said the first film uh kicking off 2018 for the marvel cinematic universe so i'm pumped cannot wait to see it this is gonna kick ass black panther will hit theaters on february 16th moving on Jurassic World The Fallen Kingdom. The follow-up to 2015's Jurassic World will serve as the fifth installment in the Jurassic Park film series as well as the second installment of a planned Jurassic World trilogy. The film features Derek Connolly and Jurassic World director Colin Trevorrow both returning as writers with Trevorrow and original Jurassic Park director Steven Spielberg acting as executive producers, along with new director J.A. Bayona. Chris Pratt returns as Owen Grady alongside Bryce Dallas Howard returning as Claire Deering, not to mention the surprise return of Jeff Goldblum, once again portraying Dr. Ian Malcolm, whom we haven't seen since 1997's The Lost World, other than a little cameo from the last film. After the demise of the Jurassic World theme park, the dinosaurs have roamed freely on the island for the last four years until a volcanic eruption now threatens their existence. Former theme park manager Claire Deering, having now founded the Dinosaur Protection Group, an organization dedicated to saving dinosaurs, recruits Owen Grady to help her rescue the remaining dinosaurs from the island. 
Meanwhile, Owen attempts to locate Blue, the last remaining of the four raptors he trained in the last film. Ultimately, he and Claire discover a conspiracy that could result in dinosaurs becoming the Earth's dominant species yeah, once I, again. You know, I, I a huge fan of the first Jurassic Park film. Um, wasn't a big fan of the sequels. And then, you know, years and years later, we get Jurassic World. And I loved Jurassic World. It was so much fun and just so refreshing to get a really good Jurassic Park film once again since the original. And uh, I thought it was done very, very well. And uh, to know that we have a sequel coming now to that movie and you know they're in the process of making this new trilogy um i love the new characters i love um chris pratt and uh, uh you know bryce dallas howard i i love these new characters that they've that they've uh inputted into the jurassic world franchise i think i think these new films are working very well and i'm so excited for this new jurassic world uh film uh, my son is too uh he was a huge fan of jurassic world this movie looks to be a lot of fun uh the trailer kicked ass um, doesn't really show us much yet but um it's really got me excited so cannot wait Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom will hit theaters on June 22nd. On to the next. Aquaman. The sixth installment in the DC Extended Universe, directed by James Wan and written by Will Beale. Jason Momoa once again returns as Arthur Curry, a.k.a. Aquaman. Following the events of Justice League, Arthur Curry, the reluctant ruler of the underworld kingdom of Atlantis, is caught between surface dwellers that are always polluting the oceans and his own people who are ready to invade the surface. Aquaman's corrupt half-brother Orm, performed by Patrick Wilson, also appears in the film seeking to take the throne of Atlantis. Not to mention Willem Dafoe, Dolph Lundgren, Amber Heard, and Nicole Kidman also join the cast. Not much more of the film's story has been disclosed, but seeing that this film serves as the first live-action standalone Aquaman film, I think it's safe to say that it will tap a little into the origin of this half-Atlantean, half-human superhero. Uh, sixth DC Extended Universe film. And um, I'm excited that uh, the next one is going to be the standalone Aquaman film. I think he's been a very cool character so far. I mean, we don't... I mean, other than Justice League, we didn't really get to see a lot of him. I mean, he was in Batman v Superman, quick little shot. Um, but after seeing him in Justice League, I think he's a really strong character. And uh, I just think the character of Aquaman deserves a standalone film. I mean, even though he's not a very popular DC character, um, I think the new portrayal of him was done very well uh, by Jason Momoa. And uh, I'm excited to see his standalone film should be a lot of fun um, and just simply being another DC extended, uh, extended universe film because I'm a huge fan of the DCEU um, probably one of the very few people in the world uh, that love these films and um, I just uh, have high hopes for it and I just want it to keep going so uh, I'm looking forward to it so Aquaman's going to end up being the last film of 2018 hitting theaters on December 21st, right before Christmas. So we got a ways to go. Solo, a Star Wars story. The second Star Wars anthology film following the 2016 film Rogue One, a standalone film set prior to the events of A New Hope, Episode 4, exploring the adventures of a young Han Solo and Chewbacca. Directed by Phil Lord, Christopher Miller, and the great Ron Howard, with the writing team of Lawrence and John Caston. The film would be presented as a space western centered on a young Han Solo, portrayed by Elden Ehrenreich, and his adventures with Wookiee partner Chewbacca, portrayed by Juna Suotamo, including their encounter with Lando Calrissian, portrayed by Donald Glover. This film will also introduce more characters such as Beckett, a criminal and mentor to Han, played by Woody Harrelson, and of course no Ron Howard film would be complete without his brother Clint Howard in an undisclosed role. Not much more of Solo's premise has been announced, but centering around Mr. Han Solo, we can only hope for more in-depth encounters with the notorious Jabba the Hutt. Oh yes, another Star Wars movie, uh, another uh, mid-qual, Solo, 
<laughs> um, this looks to be really cool. I'm just a huge Star, War Star Wars nerd. Um, and um, I thought Rogue One was a really cool movie. I think the story of Rogue One was an important story to be told and portrayed in the series. Um, just the whole, you know, uh, stealing of the Death Star plans and that kind of stuff. I thought it was an important um, uh, story. Um, and I'm glad they turned it into a movie. And now um, it looks like they're going to keep developing these uh, mid quall type uh you know, anthology films for Star Wars and Solo being the next one. So, you know, a little bit of origin story on Han Solo, Chewbacca. Uh, it, it's it's going to be a blast. I, I know it. I, I cannot wait. And I like that they're doing this because since Star Wars takes so long to make the new episodes, we don't have to wait so long in between to get another Star Wars movie. While we're waiting for the new episodes, we're going to be getting these uh, anthology films in the middle. So... I'm excited, so I cannot wait to see it. Um, looks to be a lot of fun, and uh, we'll be dropping in theaters on May 25th. So, uh, should be cool. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Paul Rudd returns as Scott Lang, a.k.a. Ant-Man, and Evangeline Lilly as Hope Van Dyne, daughter of Hank Pym, once again played by Michael Douglas, who takes over the wasp mantle from her lost mother, Janet Van Dyne, who will be portrayed by Michelle Pfeiffer. Peyton Reed returns to the director's chair with the new writing team of Chris McKenna, Eric Summers, Andrew Barr, Gabriel Ferrari, and once again, Paul Rudd. Ant-Man and the Wasp will serve as the second Ant-Man film, the 20th film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and the 8th movie of Phase 3. Talks for a sequel to Ant-Man began shortly after the film's release, with Ant-Man and the Wasp officially announced in October of 2015. The new film, set after the events of Captain America's Civil War, will see Scott Lang trying to balance his home life as a father with his responsibilities as Ant-Man. When Hope Van Dyne and Hank Pym present him with a new mission to bring to light secrets from their past, requiring him to team up with Van Dyne as the new Wasp. Not to mention, threat from the new villain, Ghost, portrayed by actress Hannah John Kamen. The film will also bring back Lang's friend and former cellmate Louise, once again portrayed by Michael Pena, along with several new characters such as Pym's former assistant, Bill Foster, played by Lawrence Fishburne. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, wow. It, I cannot wait. It's, uh, it's going to be the last film of 2018 for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, the 20th film. Can you believe that, guys? 20 Marvel Cinematic Universe films. Just mind-blowing. I was a huge fan of the first Ant-Man movie. Definitely one of my top favorites in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, if I remember right, it's I think it's like in my top, I don't know, my top five, top four, something like that. Um, I remember it placing very high. Uh, I Just offhand, I can't think, but I loved Ant-Man. I loved Paul Rudd as Scott Lang. Um, they, they brought in a lot of humor like Guardians of the Galaxy did, and I just think he's a cool character. Uh, a cool superhero. Uh, the trailer looks badass. Um, you know, we get, we're getting a lot of the uh, shrinking and and um, and uh, <laughs> reverse shrinking. You know, the shrinking aspect and the uh, the enlarging aspect. <laughs> you should say um, in this movie, from what I can see in the trailer, um, and then to just to bring in um, the wasp as. Uh, you know his uh, sidekick. You know getting a, you know getting a duel in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, this should be a lot of fun. Um, I cannot wait to see it. Um, I've, uh, you know, I've been excited for a sequel to Ant Man ever since I saw the first one, um, especially with the uh, post credit scene in the first Ant Man film, kind of setting this one up. Uh, so should be a lot of fun. I'm excited to see it for sure. And we will get Ant-Man and the Wasp July 6th. Creed 2, starring Michael B. Jordan returning as Adonis Creed, son of the late former heavyweight boxing champion Apollo Creed, along with Sylvester Stallone reprising his role for an eighth time as the beloved Rocky Balboa. Ryan Coogler, who originally directed the first Creed film, will hand over the director's chair to Stephen Cable Jr. while still pending the screenplay alongside Chio Hadari Coker and Sylvester Stallone himself. 
In this new installment, newly crowned light heavyweight champion Adonis Creed faces off against Vitor Drago, son of Ivan Drago, who Rocky defeats in Rocky IV after Ivan fatally defeats Apollo Creed in a tragic boxing match. Rumors have speculated that a Drago spin-off movie has been in development stages for some time and was actually going to be retooled into Creed II. Dolph Lundgren will reprise his role as Russian Ivan Drago, along with Romanian boxer Florian Montinu, set to play his son, and Tessa Thompson will return as Adonis' love interest, Bianca. Creed 2, I'm so happy that they're making this film. You know, when the first film got released, I, I was so excited to see a, a new Rocky movie. Uh, because after Rocky Balboa, you have to think, like, what else could they end up doing? You know, the, the story's pretty much over. And even though it was a good way to end the series, I wanted more Rocky, you know? I mean, I, I just, I wanted more. I wanted more of his universe. And when they brought in, you know, the idea of this Creed thing, I mean, I just thought it was brilliant. Um, An excellent way to continue the story with... Uh, a lot of just endless uh, ideas uh, and opportunities uh, to keep it going. Um, and uh, I loved the first Creed. I thought it was a very, very well done movie. Not just a good Rocky movie, but a, just a very well done movie in general. Um, they they announced pretty early on after the release of Creed that they were going to be making a sequel. And then it kind of got put on the back burner for a while. Um, almost to the point of possibly not doing it. Um, I mean, as far as I know, the first one did very well in the theaters. Um, so I thought it was, uh, um, you know, the, the possibility of a second one um, was uh, just going to happen no matter what. But there was a little bit of a break where we didn't hear much about it. And I don't know what was going on. But now we finally have concrete uh, confirmation. We're going to get Creed two. Um, initially it was, uh, November 21st was the, uh, release day on it, but it's been pushed back a little bit. Um, it's still supposed to happen this year. Um, I hope that that doesn't change, but filming has already commenced as far as I know. Um, so, uh, hopefully it doesn't get pushed back much more than a week or so. Uh, but definitely towards the end of the year is when we're going to be seeing this. So I cannot wait. Rocky's my all-time favorite franchise, um, of movies, um, I just, uh, Rocky IV is in my top 10 favorite movies of all time. Um, so I just love the Rocky universe. I, I just, I have so much fun watching these movies. Cannot believe we're getting another Rocky movie. So definitely uh, placed high on this list for sure. Moving on. 10 titled Halloween, this 11th installment in the franchise will reunite actress Jamie Lee Curtis, reprising her role as Laurie Strode, along with Nick Castle reclaiming his infamous white mask and kitchen knife, returning as the notorious Michael Myers slash The Shape, whom he portrayed in the 1978 original. Also, co-creator John Carpenter will serve as an executive producer and creative consultant. David Gordon Green was hired as director while co-writing the screenplay with Danny McBride. After the release of Rob Zombie's 2009 Halloween 2, Dimension Films had planned two consecutive follow-ups with neither going beyond development stages. John Carpenter, who disagreed with the remake's portrayal of Michael Myers, wanted the next Halloween to be much more terrifying than the preceding sequels. Filmmakers David Gordon Green and Danny McBride, huge fans of the franchise, proposed a new vision of Halloween to Carpenter himself. After reading the screenplay, Carpenter eagerly accepted and the film went quickly into development. Picking up 40 years after the events of the original, this film will completely disregard all previous sequels and will see Laurie Strode once again come face to face with her serial killer brother, Michael Myers. Anytime we get the news of a uh, of a horror franchise getting another movie coming out, I always get excited. Whether it's coming to the theater or straight to video, when it's one of my iconic, my favorite iconic horror characters, Jason, Freddy, Leatherface, Chucky, you name it, I get excited. I don't care if the movie is shitty, um, but I get excited for it. Um, Hellraiser was getting a 10th installment this year, straight to video. Looks pretty good. I've seen the trailer so far. Um, last year's Chucky, uh, Cult of Chucky, kicked ass, I thought. Um, we got a new Leatherface this 
Uh, I think it came out this year or the end of the last year. I can't remember. You know, Leatherface, the newest one. Uh, it was in theater, uh, limited release in theater, but uh, I checked it out. I mean, I, I just I was excited to see a new Leatherface movie. Thought the film could have been a little bit better, but I still enjoyed it. But now here we go. Halloween is getting a new movie. Uh, we haven't seen a new Halloween film in nine years. 2009 was the last one that came out, uh, which was Rob Zombie's uh, follow-up to his remake of Halloween. And now we're getting a original series sequel, but they're ignoring all the other sequels. So this is going to be a straight direct sequel to Halloween 1. So I guess kind of what... Texas Chainsaw Massacre did. Like, you know, they made two and three and four. Um, and then when they came out with Texas Chainsaw back in 2006 or 2007, whenever that was, that was a direct sequel to the original. So they're kind of, it seems like they're kind of doing the same thing with Halloween. Either way, Jamie Lee Curtis is coming back to portray Laurie Strode again. Nick Castle is going to be the first Michael Myers. Nick Castle is coming back to be uh, Michael Myers again. I mean, come on, you guys. I know it's kind of weird that this is ignoring all the other sequels, but we'll have to just wait and see what they do with it. They've already begun filming. It, it, I just, I'm, I'm just excited, you guys. I love Halloween. It's my favorite all-time horror franchise is Friday the 13th, Jason. But Michael Myers and Halloween is definitely up there on the list, and uh, I'm so, so excited to see this new Halloween movie. So. Halloween, whatever the new title may be, is getting released to theaters October 19th. So, just in time for Halloween. <laughs> All right, we are moving on now to my number one most anticipated film of 2018. What is it? Let's check it out. Avengers Infinity War. Starring Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans reprising their roles as Tony Stark and Steve Rogers respectively, and Josh Brolin taking on the role of the Avengers' toughest villain yet, Thanos. Not to mention basically the entire roster of heroes from all previous MCU films returning to reprise their roles for what has ultimately turned into the most anticipated film in the franchise. This film will serve as the third Avengers film, the 19th film overall in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and the seventh in Phase 3. While the first two Avenger films were written and directed by Joss Whedon, the Russo brothers Anthony and Joe have taken over the directorial duties with Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely penning the screenplay. Set four years after the events of Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2, Infinity War will see the Avengers still torn apart after the events of Civil War, teaming up with the Guardians of the Galaxy themselves to face the world's newest and biggest threat yet, Thanos, who's trying to collect the six Infinity Stones to create the gauntlet that will allow him to bend reality to his will. Infinity War is set to be a two-film series filmed back-to-back -back with a second installment hit in theaters May of 2019. Guys, I cannot put into words how excited I am for Avengers Infinity War. I have been a devoted follower to the Marvel Cinematic Universe way back in 2008 when Iron Man one got released. I got, I own every movie. I got like a thousand copies of each movie. I could watch these movies, these movies over and over. And every time a new one comes out, I just get really excited like a little kid at Christmas. And all these movies that we've seen so far, um, this one being the 19th installment. Um, and so far there's 17 released. Um, Black Panther being number 18. Out of all these films that we've watched, you guys have basically all led up to this. I mean, you guys, fans of MCU, know what I'm talking about. It has all led up to this. The whole uniting of the Avengers and uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy and all these other characters that have been brought into the series have all been kind of, you know, brought together for this movie or these movies, you know, Avengers Infinity War Part 1 and 2. Uh, the big battle against Thanos. So I'm so excited. Um, it's going to be kind of interesting when they end Phase 3, you know, when they're done with the whole Thanos thing, and then they move on to Phase 4. It'd be kind of interesting how things are going to go now that they've, like, reached the culmination, and now it's over after this. You know, how is it going to continue on st strongly? But 
I don't doubt the MCU. I mean, I'm sure they got big plans. I mean, especially now with the whole signing of Fox and and uh, <laughs> possibility of bringing in X Men and and uh, Fantastic Four, or who, whoever else, um, should be interesting. So I'm sure they got big plans planned for Phase Four. But regardless, you guys, I have been watching the MCU, you know, for ten years now, waiting for this moment, Avengers Infinity War. So I am so stoked. Um, I wish it was here right now. Uh, when the when the trailer dropped, it just blew my mind. I, I think I watched it about ten times in a row, over and over and over, to catch every little detail. And oh, just you guys, I'm just so so happy and excited for this movie, Avengers: Infinity War. I just know it's going to kick ass, and I just know it is going to make a shitload at the box office, no doubt. Yes. Avengers Infinity War will be hitting theaters on May. All right, everybody. 4th. So that wraps it up for my top 10 most anticipated films of 2018. Like I said, a lot of really good stuff coming up this year. It's going to be a fun year of movie going. Um, let me know down in the comments if you guys uh, want me to do another uh movie theater video um i posted for all my 2017 movies that i went and seen my top 10 list um if you guys enjoyed that video and want to see me do it again uh just you know drop me a comment down below um it does take a lot of work to do it and a lot of memory in my phone to keep the 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 videos in there um so i mean it's it's worth it to me if you guys want to see it so if you do i'll do it again if not no worries just let me know down in the comments below but there you have it, everybody. 2018 is looking awesome. First movie I'm going to go see uh, is in just over two weeks, uh, which is going to be Black Panther. Cannot wait for that. And then we will end the year with, uh, um, which one was it? <coughs> Aquaman, yeah. We'll be finishing the year with Aquaman. So there you have it. If you enjoy my top 10 videos, uh, give it a thumbs up. Just hit that like button right down below. Drop me a comment. Uh, let me know what you guys are excited for for 2018. Uh, what your number one movies are that you're uh, excited to see. Share the video around. Subscribe if you have not. We will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.